Before I get started, I want to thank everyone for attending my presentation. Human Factors and Cockpit Automation provides an in-depth knowledge of human factors as it relates to advanced flight decks. The motivation for this project was the increase of automation incidents and accidents that plagued the air transportation industry. The research helps to identify and provide safer solutions for air transportation. Can I get a show of hands how many of you have programmed or scheduled an event into your phone or computer to remind you of something and it did not happen? We have so much technology at our fingertips, but sometimes we forget a process or function in this technology. Pilots have similar problems. Technology helps to reduce the number of piloting tasks, but at the same time, it creates new problems. We become unaware of what technology is doing. Sometimes we're confused by the modes of the auto thrust or the auto throttle, and we must be aware through mode awareness. Confusion could occur with GPS sequencing and the FMS. It's not, not programmed correctly. Or with awareness, we use good processes, proper callouts, altitude heading, and deviation. There's an increase in the number of incidents and accidents due to this human error. These accidents can include the XL Airways incident, accident, Air Asiana accident, and Air France that are all due to automation. The automation role in aviation today is that machine performs tasks previously executed by humans. It comes from, in the 1920s, Lawrence Sperry paved the way from the first autopilot in the 1960s. NASA developed the first fly-by-wire system in the lunar landing vehicle. It's a problem today to aviation because advanced flight decks require more proficiency and pilots do not intervene quickly when problems arise. Do you think automation is a concern for future aviation? In the ages of flight, the right age was characterized by innovation, new boundaries being broken, early pioneers concerned with the fundamentals of lift control and propulsion. In the jet age, focused on flying further, faster, and adding more passenger capacity. Advancements include new autopilot systems and technology to streamline airline operations. In the modern age, aircraft fly longer routes, are more fuel efficient, and can land in near zero visibility with auto land systems. They are designed with sophisticated levels of automation and the use of auto flight systems. Human factors are studying issues related to humans. It accounts for more than 80% of all aviation accidents. And the shell model and reasons model are all causal factors to help to present findings of study for pilots, controllers. And reasons model helps to identify root cause and accidents through organizational problems. They may have various protective layers, but these holes represent small failures or holes in the system, like latent and active failure. A latent failure is maybe poor policy, safety culture in an organization. An active failure is omission, violation, or lack of execution, such as failure to activate an approach mode when vectored to final. Have you been in an, or in an organization and experienced the failure when they had a policy to protect against that failure? Human factors is also affected by flight deck design, manufacturer design, interface de design, flight, flight path management, auto flight processes. Moreover, loss of situational awareness while focusing on higher order tasks, such as planning for an approach, a flight crew can become unaware of present flight path trajectory. You can see in this picture, I'm using some level of automation to demonstrate to a student the use of the autopilot system with the MFD. So what does the data say? In a recent automation study found pilots were not focusing on current flight path. This is 747 pilots actually. They focused on higher order thinking. Moreover, NASA ASRS data shows that more than 43 percent of pilots are automation dependent. In a recent FAA working group study 27% of all automation issues are due to mode selection. Research of incidents and accidents investigations show more automation concerns internationally than domestic. In air, aircraft operations, Airbus has a higher number of occurrences in automation incidents than Boeing because it is a highly technical airplane. 
with a fair amount of automation. I will summarize some automation incidents and accident investigations. Some well-known ones, Air Asia United Flight 214, UPS Airlines Flight 1354, Air France Flight 447, and Qantas Airlines Flight 72. Air Asia crashed into a seawall, stalled and crashed into a seawall, short of its intended landing. And there were multiple factors cited for this, primarily focused on the use of the auto throttle and human performance. You can see here that the airplane is making a complete 180 after crashing into the runway. Automation reliance on auto flight systems during critical phase of flight. Mode confusion as it pertains to the auto throttle systems and hold mode. CRM skills or crew resource management. The safety culture at Air Asiana. Flight crew operating manual procedures are multiple factors cited. In the UPS accident, flight 1354 focused on a controlled flight into terrain. This is what we call a CFIT accident. Then during a non-precision localizer approach, where a virtual glide path was supposed to be activated through the flight management computer, but the crew failed to activate it. The airplane descended with a high vertical descent rate, it was on stable approach, and the flight crew did not adhere to this SOPs. So multiple factors were cited here, and I just named them off. Also, fatigue was a, a big issue. You know, the, the first officer was quite fatigued during the flight, but the captain also made some critical mistakes in judgment, and uh, he had programmed a high vertical descent rate that not giving good CRM skills to his first officer and, and making her aware of what happened during the flight. This next accident you're really quite familiar with, Air France Flight 447, which is a, resulted in pedo icing over the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Brazil. And here you can see some pictures of the fuselage on the left-hand side and the landing gear on the right-hand side. There were confusing messages related to the ECAM or electronic centralized alert monitoring system that resulted in the airplane going into what is called an alternate law. Uh, although there still remain some protections in the Airbus system, uh, the, the airspeed which uh, basically was invalid data due to pedo icing, uh, pedo tube is where we gather airspeed data. Um, the pilots basically provided some incorrect control inputs, leading the airplane to remain in a stalled condition and subsequent departure from controlled flight. A fundamental misunderstanding of aerodynamics with incorrect flight path inputs. Okay. This, this was an incident, not, a, not such an accident. Uh, and this Qantas Airlines uh, was en route to Perth, Australia at flight level 370. And uh, the autopilot commanded a, a series of nose dives, resulting in injuries, mostly from flight crew or crew and passengers being, you know, ejected out of their seats on, into the ceiling. Uh, and it was a result of a, a air data inertial reference unit failure. Uh, more or less of the uh, this incident could have been prevented because of, uh, you know just not being able to react in a timely fashion. Uh, but this is an incident only. The industry focuses heavily on, heavily on automation. Boeing's philosophy is that the pilot is the final authority and automation is up to their discretion. Airbus's philosophy was, is within normal flight envelope, automation may override pilots in high speed, low speed bank, and load factor protection. However, things go unexpected. They can disconnect the auto thrust, autopilot, and fly manually. The Federal Aviation Administration has an FAR 121-133 that airlines must adhere to compliance in their manuals. Airlines use threat error management as a safety protocol, such as that of JetBlue, which is in line with cultural norms, beliefs, and values. And we are given an opportunity to, in, with investigations of these incidents and accidents, help to provide us uh, to learn and improve air transportation safety. 
my research concluded with 10 recommendations, some of them being improved manual flying skills for one, guidelines for automation, reinforcement on stall upset procedures, enhancement of flight deck design, develop and improve automation modes to deter information overload, develop standards for manufacturers on human factors, require a 1,500-hour rule for foreign operators, similar to that of the FAA, and enhance emergency and abnormal automation procedures. Today, cockpits are increasingly becoming more complex than before. Automation introduces new problems for pilots, and manual flying skills are being degraded. This concludes my presentation. I'd like to thank you for listening in and watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please, please feel free to comment on my YouTube link or feel free to email me directly. My references are three pages. I'm attaching those here as well. First page, second page of reference, and third page of reference. You all have a nice day. Thank you.